the Uranium One deal, all part of Vladimir Putin's focus to expand Russia's share of the nuclear energy industry, not only in this country, but around the world. Today, Russia owns 60% of the global market in nuclear power plants, and the United States must now import 90% of its nuclear fuel. How could such a deal have ever been approved? Joining us tonight, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Greg, great to have you here. This, this is extraordinary, the developments that we're witnessing here that are being reported on. And there is no order from Attorney General uh, Jeff Sessions to lift the, the, uh, the nondisclosure and to get over that, have that informant get over to the, uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee. It should be an absolute no-brainer for Sessions. He should have yesterday said, of course, uh, I will tear up the nondisclosure agreement that's gagging uh, this confidential informant. Uh, but as I've written before, Sessions should resign because he's in way over his right. head. And he's being manipulated by a lot of people in the Department of Justice who are either holdovers from the Obama administration or should never have been at DOJ to begin with, Rod Rosenstein in particular. Rod Rosenstein, his name amongst those that, were, uh, that have been uh, revealed uh, in, in the reporting uh, on, the, on, on the deal itself, the right. bribery and racketeering charges that uh, this informant made possible. Uh, how is it that Rosenstein and uh, uh, James Comey, and the list goes on, right. uh, are in a position, and Robert Mueller, importantly, uh, the, the special counsel, they have been uh, in absolute conflict it seems throughout. It appears that Mueller, Rosenstein, and Comey, who were all in on this FBI probe and all of the evidence that was gathered, covered it up. And they hid it from Congress. They had a legal duty to tell Congress. If they had told Congress, Congress would have surely stopped the sale of uranium to the Russians. There's one other name that should be added to this that I discovered by reading through the published documents of the indictment and affidavits. Andrew Weissman signed off on it. Guess where he is now? He's on Robert Mueller's special counsel team investigating Trump-Russian collusion when, in fact, it appears he, along with the others, were covering up Hillary-Russia collusion. And with all of this in front of Congress now, uh, the, the, there is, I would guess, 100 percent awareness amongst Congress, the Senate, uh, of, of what uh, we're reporting and discussing tonight. Right. How can there be any hesitation, stop the nonsense, have the Judiciary Committees, the Intelligence Committees of both houses turn to this issue and get to work, because Clinton corruption is not the figment of a, of a political uh, presidential campaign's imagination. This is reality staring the entire country in the face, corruption that is beyond uh, any expectation. Well, now it's clear that Jeff Sessions needs to get off his duff and appoint a second special counsel to investigate Hillary Clinton over this whole Uranium One deal and the use of her foundation and the funneling by Russia, uh, allegedly, of $145 million in money to the wallet of Bill Clinton. The key here is the confidential informant. Uh, you can't hide that confidential informant from Congress, so says the United States Supreme Court in a 1927 decision. It said the, the uh, Congress has absolute unfettered right to interview anybody and oversee the Department of Justice. So they cannot hide this confidential informant. Well, obviously, uh, Rod Rosenstein, who is the deputy attorney general, uh, Jeff Sessions, uh, as a result, are, are saying he, they're not going to lift it to this point. Why? What can the president do? Can he directly say to Attorney General Jeff Sessions, I don't care what your problem is, I don't care whether you're ill, I don't care whether you are reluctant or have become an ideological, uh, uh, you know, uh, mutation here. Right. We want you to lift that nondisclosure and... In the right of the and the sure. right of the public to know what's going on here is just being obliterated. If I were the president, I'd, 
I wouldn't do it myself. I'd have my White House counsel contact uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions and say, uh, look, Mr. Attorney General, here's the Supreme Court decision that says you can't block this confidential informant from talking to Congress. And, you know, if Jeff Sessions can read and comprehend simultaneously, he'll immediately tear up the gag order. And uh, we just await the next development because surely there will be. Uh, I think that uh, the president may have been successful in persuading the mainstream, the national left wing, not media, if you will, uh, to have actually taken a peek at the story and the facts. They're not reporting it. No, I mean, I, they haven't to this it, point. It, it's, it's amazing because think of this historically. Uh, if you thought the cover up by Nixon of Watergate, just a covering up a third rate burglary, was a big deal, this is covering up. Russian taking over control illegally of U.S. uranium assets. Think about what it means for Cephas, though. The membership of that, uh, including members of the National Security Council, the Homeland Security Council, uh, the secretaries of state and treasury, oh, yeah. and it goes on. They approved a sale of assets to Uranium One that has resulted in the United States now importing 90 percent of its uranium for the 99 reactors that we have in this country online. The people, it's, the it's people who, in the Obama administration who thought this was a good idea are deaf, dumb and blind or crooked. And I'm voting crooked. You know, you're right about that. Greg, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Good to have you here.